Please remember that nothing we say here should be taken as personal advice. The conversation is for entertainment purposes only. If you have questions about your financial situation, please talk to a licensed financial advisor. All right, welcome to another episode of Future Money, where we talk about the investments of the future. That would make us money. All right, welcome back. Uh, Welcome back. April, (laughs) what? April 23rd? We're post-tax deadline, which is big for us. Yeah. Um, Market going through a little correction. Yeah. (laughs) Although the last two days have been been better. Good, yeah. Uh, So Um, I think it's it's important that we talk to people about corrections, um, that they're totally normal. Yeah. Uh, they happen Markets every just year. Don't go up straight. You know? They don't go up straight. In <laughs> fact, it, it would be very hard uh, if yeah. markets went straight up because people always are adding yeah. money, and yeah. you know we need opportunities to buy things. Yeah. Uh, and if everything's up a hundred percent, it's hard to buy. If anything, it's actually healthy to see a bit of a pullback. Yeah. I think it's kind of you know last two months or the beginning of the year, people were overbought. Yeah, people were expensive. For sure, and we've seen the last three. Basically, all month market coming down, yeah, uh, which is really kind of brought valuations down. So that's very, very positive, I think. Yeah, I mean, again, right? Like nothing's really changed. If a market got overbought, right. probably, um, you know, I think I think the big thing also is right is interest rates, yeah. right? You know, we've we've had some higher than expected inflationary yeah. reads. The Fed has sort of changed their tone. Right. We, I. I we were we came into this year with the expectation of six rate cuts. Right. Uh, then it moved to four. Yeah. Then it moved to three. Now it's two, and and some are saying possibly none. Yeah. Well, it's funny we didn't even supposed to talk about this, but I think since yeah. you're spe- speaking about it, let's yeah. talk about it. Like, you know, the narrative yeah. has changed drastically. Yeah. We talked about this in our weekly commentary this week, which is, you know, as you said, market is really about expectations. When your expectations was six rate cuts, as you yeah. said, and you move to three and now to zero, yeah. you know, that just changes right. the valuation for everything, bonds, right. stocks, and so forth, right? right. Um, and again, this is kind of, a, it's, it's a moving target. Right? For sure. Like the Fed doesn't know. Uh, we get these inflation reads every week or every month per, yeah. per se. We got CPI, PPI, all these. It feels like it's every week, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like, right? The Fed is talking this week, and I'm like, didn't they just say something last week? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Uh, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, when you try to dissect everything, yeah, we have earnings coming out right yeah. now, right? And yeah. earnings is really what drives markets. Yeah, real quick, back up for a second. W- explain to people why rates staying higher is bad for the stock market. Well, you know, you, it's it's in, in a simple simple way of thinking about it is yeah. if you can get 5% yeah. in your money market or your treasuries, yeah. why take any risk, Yeah, right? Okay. So it's, it's you're basically, stock valuation is discounted future cash flows. So the higher the higher rates, the, the, the lower those numbers are, right? Yeah, the so lower another, your cash flow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So the, va- so, 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 so the future value of those assets, yeah. it goes down, right? Yeah. I don't want to, and the relative value ultimately, right? Like, if a lot of people are thinking, "Well, I can get five percent and not mm-hmm. do anything," yep. Why would I take risk and earn ten percent, hundred percent, or eight percent, or whatever? And frankly, that's what the Fed is trying to do when yeah. they're trying to slow things down, right? Yeah. They're trying to give you an addition, another option to be yep. able to park your money somewhere safe so they can slow things down so they can bring inflation down right uh so it's been working you know yeah but the bigger story is that the u.s economy is very resilient yeah. this is i think the biggest For story sure. that people haven't been talking about thought maybe talking about but you know our economy is the envy of the rest of the world yeah. right it's interesting, and we'll, we're going to get into this. Was we're going to talk about a lot of this show is going to be about like the psychology of money sure. and, and and how how we view money, biases, yep. all this kind of stuff. But it's it's very interesting because there's been multiple articles written with the with the upcoming election is how people view the economy, right? And the sentiment on our economy is very bad, <laughs> right? Even though the <laughs> actual data are very good, right? Um, and so there's an You're interesting talking about emotion versus reality. Exactly. <laughs> there's a very interesting dichotomy. And, and I think a lot of that is attributed to forget like political Democrat Republican, yep. but a lot of that I, I believe is attributed to the fact that inflation is higher yep. and is disproportionately affecting lower to yep. lower middle income families. Inf- inflation is something that you're faced with on a daily basis, right? Yeah. You go to dinner, you go to the store, you see the inflation in front of you, right? Sure. Uh, 
eco- the economy is much bigger than that, yeah. right? So when you look at uh, unemployment numbers, you look at GDP growth and all those things, they're most abstract in a way, yeah, right? For sure. Uh, so I think that's why you have the emotion, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because I think it's really, really important. Uh, so let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, um, so we have like three three basically subjects I want to talk about. One of them is really behavioral finance, yeah. and, and I think the big one. Uh, the reason why we want to talk about behavioral finance is uh, last month in March, uh, we lost Daniel Kahneman, mm-hmm. uh, who's an Israeli economist, uh, probably one of th- probably one of the best and 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 most renowned economists in behavioral finance. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. His his was well he was part of the marquee study yeah. um, in behavioral finance from the 70s really right. yeah the 70s uh they started this brand brand new branch of economics really um and, and what they did is really they tried to study how humans make decisions right mm-hmm. uh a lot of the previous economic um uh, studies and and thinking was that humans are rational, yeah. and it turns out <laughs> it so turns ha- out. Have you ever talked to a human <laughs> like about anything? <laughs> well, it turns out we're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, like you literally like I didn't need a study to know that. Like I've talked to plenty of people to be like humans are irrational yeah. most of the time. Yeah, but you, if you look at you know if you, if you look at you know all the economic theories that came before yeah, them, yeah. right? The, all the expectations were. You know, markets are efficient. Correct. The economy runs. <laughs> yeah. You know, supply demand, like all mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's all very like logistical, theoretical. Correct. Like, you know, un- unbiased kind of stuff. Yeah. So what they did is through a series of papers in in the seventies and eighties, they basically came up with all these heuristics or, or, or these kind of biases that we have around yeah. decision making about anchoring prospect theory sure. and all these kind of uh, fallacies that we have within our thinking right yeah. um, and it turns out that these things impact everything that we do yeah right for um, sure uh, just to back up for a second let's talk about heuristics so for those of you who don't know I actually you know, I have uh, yeah, a background a in psychology. In the firm, yeah, well, yeah. Size, but actually, in psychology, because I have a master's uh, and I oh. my undergrad was in psychology, okay. um, and I actually did study prospect theory when I was in school. Okay. Um, we didn't talk about it in a in a financial setting, <laughs> yeah. Um, but prospect theory is actually a very well known theory in cognitive psychology, yeah. Um, and and it, you know, so so Hatem mentioned this word heuristics, and I think it's important to kind of define what that means. Basically, a heuristic is is sort of a shortcut right. that our brain creates. Yep. You know, it's thought to be sort of an evolutionary advantage, right? That we have a shortcut so that we don't have to make complex decision making for everything that comes into our brain. Yep. Right. So it's useful. It's very useful. Yep. Especially if you're, you know, in the jungle, you know, <laughs> fighting a, a lion or something. Yeah. Um, you know, in our in our older days, you know, mm-hmm. but. As with everything, as we've developed into a modern society mm-hmm. that's that's more rational mm-hmm. and more, you know, uh, based on sort of like organizational and, and you know, yep. um, community living, our heuristics, our sort of shortcuts also have downsides. Yep. Um, and that's exactly what Hatem is talking about here, the, heur- the sort of like the biases that we create because mm-hmm. we automatically assume one thing because our brain says that's what it's supposed to be, yep. right? So, so, right, risk is... In and of itself, we're, we're going to talk about risk, and we've been talking yep. about risk as a very basic sort of elementary force, yep. right? Yeah. Our brain says risk equals bad. Yeah. We don't. We don't want risk. We don't want to get eaten by that lion. Right. We we don't want to lose yep. our food to the neighboring tribe. We yep. don't want to you know do anything that's going to cause us harm in any way. Yeah. And 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 like this, like let's talk about some examples, right? Because because the studies basically came up with the with with the reality is that we are all irrational but yeah. but what happens is you know being irrational just is 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 it's not it's not good enough right we need to understand what that means right in our yeah. daily 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 decision making absolutely so when you think about risk right what ha- with prospect theory means that the impact of loss yeah. is much higher than impact of gain yeah. so if IL gives me $100,000 uh, and i make him Twenty thousand dollars. So now you have one hundred twenty. Woohoo! Woohoo! Right? You're you're an or you give me a hundred thousand, I lose you twenty thousand yeah. dollars. So now you have eighty. 
Aww. right? Uh, <laughs> having 80 is going to hurt you a lot more yeah. than getting 120. Yeah. Right? That's that that's the general concept. That's the general concept. Yeah. Right. Let's let's del- I mean, I see it with clients all the time. For sure. Right? You For know sure. what I mean? Uh, I get a lot of calls when clients accounts are down. Yeah. I don't get as many calls when they well, accounts they're are down. They're yeah. like, oh, great. Thanks for that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and even so, even if you had an amazing year in the yeah. market and you have a bad year that follows or yeah. the year after that, the, the, generally, the, the and this is not from prospect theory specifically, this is mm-hmm. our own personal experience with clients, mm-hmm. um, is that you earn 30% one year or whatever yeah. because you guys crushed it is forgotten right like and the high water mark of where you were yep. is a lot of times where clients anchor and this is another thing we talk sure. about we anchor to specific things because they stick in our brain right oh i had uh you know i had one hundred and twenty thousand, and now i have 110 right but they don't you know we don't think about the fact that we still made 10 yep we think about the fact that we lost 10 from yep. the top yeah and it's oftentimes it's important to understand that right like you know e- you always look at the highest account value of your account. Yeah. And y- yes, you had that amount, but you have to look at longer terms right. and understand that things move up and down over time, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, and and so the, the prospect theory basically showed is that there's a two to one ratio, essentially. Like you have yeah. to gain twice as much to be able to, to be able to stomach a you know the yeah. half of half of that being a loss like yeah. it feels twice as bad the better way to put this is it feels twice as bad to, to lose, lose money, money. Yeah. than it does to gain money yeah <laughs> and, and and i think some of the studies that they've done or some of the the experiments they've done is if I give you a dollar versus yeah. if I take take a dollar from yeah. you, you know, there's a lot of really fun <laughs> studies about this. And, yeah, you know, if you have kids, <laughs> by the way, uh, I highly recommend on Disney Plus. There's this show called Brain Games. Okay, that I watch with my son all the uh-huh. time because I want him to watch stuff that's educational but also fun. Yeah, um, and they do a lot of this kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, one of the things they do is, is they give people money and they're like, here, here's twenty bucks. You can gamble it. Um, or you can keep it. You mm-hmm. gamble it, you'll make 50 if you win. Like, yeah. you'll get 50 in the end. And everybody who was given 20 bucks was like, no, nah, I'm just going to keep 20 bucks. <laughs> right. uh, but if you don't give me the but 20... But if, if you give them 50 and then you take money away, <laughs> yeah. it completely changes the dynamic, even though the overall outcome is exactly, exactly the, the same. same. Yep. Yeah. And, so, and this is really important, right? Like, I think you have to think of these shortcuts as being part of our daily yeah. decision making. Yep. So we have to be aware of them, right? And I'm not saying we need to change them. It's just awareness is really the key here. It's right? absolutely awareness and and we can change them as much as possible. We know that as humans, yep. we, we're all subject to our own biases, yep. um, whether that's with money or any other f- aspect of our life. Yep. But being cognizant of, of the bias yep. itself helps mitigate the yeah. bias, even if it doesn't eliminate it. 100%. Right? Let's, let's talk about a couple more biases. Yeah. Um, like the availability bias. Yes. Okay? So tell us about the availability. Availability, basically, you overestimate the importance of certain amount of data, right? Like mm-hmm. if it's available to you. So, for example, if you heard about uh, a, a plane crash, yeah. right, uh, that just happened, then you overestimate the occurrence of a yeah. plane crash, Yeah. right? Uh, even though it's very rare occurrence, simply sure. because you just heard about one just happening, yeah. then you, you you start kind of you know associating that with something that right. happens a lot more. It's often. also sort of interrelated with another bias, which we which is the recency bias, right? right. Well, this one's the recency bias is very powerful. Um, and basically says that we sort of use the availability of, of the most recent information. Right. Right. So if there was a, in your example, if there was a plane crash, yep. I'm going to assume there was a plane crash because I just heard about it and right. it's in my brain. It's kind of stuck in there. It's also what I tell our, you know, our advisors. I go, remember, people are going to remember. There's also the primacy bias, the mm-hmm. primacy effect. Yep. People are going to remember what you said first. And remember what you said last, and yeah. everything in the middle kind of just gets <laughs> lost, <laughs> right? All right. So when you ha- so this is as as a communicator, right? Like you have yeah. to think about this because that's yeah. how our brains work, right? For sure. Um, so recency bias, right? You know the 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 market is killing it last year, right? That means that it should kill it this year too, correct? Right? And exactly. it's just not the case. Or, or by the other token yeah. is market sold off, yeah. so people get scared and they right. want to invest, right. which is exactly the opposite where people should be doing correct. because. When when things sell off, inherently things are cheaper, right? Correct. So yeah. so you have to kind of think about that, you know. But 
again, like the the fear that comes in because yeah. of loss aversion, yeah, it's is is really a problem sometimes. You know? Absolutely. And um, there's the confirmation bias, which is one of my favorites. Um, and confirmation bias is you know is rampant across <laughs> all. We all do that. Whether it's money, (laughs) whether it's politics or, you know, your relationships in your life, like confirmation bias is one of my favorites because I feel like it's utilized the most, you know, obviously not in necessarily a good way, but it's basically saying like you only seek out information that confirms what you already feel or believe. Yep. Right. If you're a Fox News guy or if you're a CNN guy, (laughs) right, I'm not taking a side here. Right. You only seek out the information that those news organizations will confirm whatever political idea. Yeah. If you're a pro-Trump, you only seek stuff that's pro-Trump. If yeah. you're anti-Trump, you only seek out any information to the contrary. Yeah, you just it, you just it. you just throw it out. It doesn't. Yeah. It, that's just that's just wrong information. Yeah. And I, and I think this is also even a much bigger problem because if you think about it, all the algorithms and the social media Correct. platforms, you know, they yes. really emphasize things. Absolutely, that you, things that you you seek out and co- unconfirm. So they really kind of almost emphasize yes. this confirmation. It's that vibe. echo chamber that people talk about, right? That social media in essence is mm-hmm. based on confirmation yep. bias. Yeah. Like in and of itself is its algorithm. If you go back to the sort of the genesis of these things, you thought to yourself, oh, this is a good thing. Like yep. it knows I like right. Sports, right? It knows I like basketball, right? So I'm gonna wa- I'm gonna like look at some videos about basketball. I'm gonna and read boom. some stuff about basketball. Now my entire feed is basketball. Now I can't get basketball off my feed. <laughs> yeah, and even though I love basketball, now I hate basketball on my <laughs> feed. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like, leave me alone, please. I don't want to hear. <laughs> right. Uh, and and obviously, as as social media grew and as yeah. sort of like the money making machine behind social media yeah. grew it sort of started to say, okay, well, this is clearly, now we're gonna also, not only are we gonna, we're gonna give you what you want, but we're gonna give you what you might not necessarily want, but that's gonna get the most engagement from you yeah. um, and other people, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, so the internet that has essentially become a confirmation S- bias. Solely, you know, <laughs> and you know, I think this is why it's so important to try to get your information sources from different places. You know, yeah. Try to, you know, balance things out. Try to look at, you know, for, for opposing views. Talk to people yeah. that don't think the same way because that's really the only way you yeah. can actually really truly look at the other side, right? Absolutely. And yeah. I wish everybody would do this. And again, I don't care if you're left or yeah. right or, right. you know, you should always be looking at the other side of an argument. And by the way, with investing, this is exactly the same thing. And yep. we have investment meetings and, you know, I, I'm sort of jokingly yeah. always, always sort of, portrayed yeah. as the contrarian yeah um and mainly my personality in general is i like to play devil's advocate even yeah. if it's a position i agree with mm-hmm. i try to play the other side because you have to look at things from a position that's not your own and and we see this a lot when you w- with investing yeah clients or other advisors or whoever it may be own a stock for example right, right? and it doesn't matter that stock is the greatest right and it doesn't matter what you say even if, yeah. Even if the information is to the contrary. Right, exactly. You just basically, you seek out all the positive information, right. you throw out all the negative right. information, right? right? Um, one way of dealing with that internally as a firm is, if I had new money, would I be buying that new company? Correct. That's a question yeah. we ask ourselves all the time, yep. right? Uh, what information changed, right? How can I, can I be objective about that, yeah. right? Uh, we see this a lot with people that maybe work for a company and they yeah. have a large position uh, and it's called the endowment effect. So yeah. they almost like feel that they are, they, they want to h- hang on to that position. Yeah. And we try to have them diversify it because we just don't want people to be sure. overly concentrated. Overly, yeah. um, and, and then there's this, right? And that leads to other things that happen. That leads to, right, the sunk cost. Mm -hmm. fallacy right now it's like okay well i worked at this company i got all this i I was endowed with all this stock but now i'm down 50 percent. right i can't sell it now right right so we get that all the time how how do you deal with that the sunk cost fallacy (laughs) is is one of the toughest things to deal with Mm -hmm. because you have to understand that just because a stock was worth 100 at one point because somebody said it was yeah and now it's worth 50 doesn't mean it was ever really worth 100 or will be again, per se. Right. Now, it could be. It doesn't mean that it's not going to go to 20. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Correct. And a lot of people learned this lesson very, very hard in 2022. Yeah. Um, after the euphoria in 2021. Sure, yeah. That there were stocks that were literally down 90%. Yep. Um, yep. And, and stocks that people were swearing by yep. at, in 2021. 
Um, so it's important to basically say, well, why do you think it's worth X? Like, let's again, the the as advisors, our job is to yep. obviously empathize yep. and connect with our clients on an emotional level and figure out where they're coming from and help them make the right decision with with logic. Right. Right. Also. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that's generally what I would do is say, okay, well, why do you think it's worth a hundred? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what will make it get there again? If you had new money, yeah. would you be mm -hmm. buying it at a hundred? Right. Um, right now it's at 50. How like, and then say like, at what point are you willing to say Correct. I was wrong about this? Right. And I think that's it. Like people have to accept that sometimes we're wrong. It's a bad and, investment. And, and by the way, investing is you're going to be wrong 50% of the times. Right. Hopefully forty nine. Yeah, hopefully forty nine. <laughs> if you if you if you if you write fifty five percent of the time, yeah. you're Warren Buffett. Yeah. That's yeah. that's how hard. Yeah, there's bad investments. Is. You yeah. just have to understand that. You have to understand it's part of the game, right? Yeah. But but you have to kind of minimize those losses because being yeah. able to minimize those losses Correct. is yeah. gonna be the key yeah. because you have also opportunity costs, right? Can I take that money and invest it somewhere else? Absolutely. All those things, yeah. right? Um, so, so the, yeah, absolutely very, very important to understand like when am I, you know, have this fallacy yeah. around, you know, what positions do I, do I own and, and valuations and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and again, a, a lot of the, you know, diversification really does a lot of this for people. You know, people don't realize how much volatility and risk comes with owning yep. individual stocks. Yep. Um, it's a lot. Um, and you've seen stocks like, you know, Apple and Microsoft and Google, you know, do really well over the last decade or whatever. Uh -huh. But for every Apple, Microsoft, Google, there's 20 yep. non-Apple, yep. Microsoft, Googles that sure. are down over the last 10 years. You know what 100%. I mean? Um, and, and we can look at that just by looking at, for example, the small cap index. Yep. Which, which has 2,000 <laughs> companies and, and has vastly, woefully underperformed uh, um, the, the large cap sectors because there's just a million factors that go into this. And, and we just, we hear about the mag seven, right? And we yeah. think, oh, well, it's easy. You just buy tech stocks and you hold yeah. on to them. Yeah. No, but right. NVIDIA is now one of the mag seven companies. Correct. Who heard about NVIDIA four years ago? Well, well it's makes except, me, except us. Except that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we listen, we <laughs> brings you to hindsight. Yeah, hindsight hindsight bias, bias, yeah, right, right. Like, oh, I knew that's gonna happen. That is bullshit yeah. because yeah. you know we invested in video in 2016. We did not know that the company is gonna go from 500 billion market cap to two trillion. Yeah, you know? I think at the time it was like 200 billion. Yeah. So um, uh, we we knew they were doing a lot of really cool stuff. Right. We listened to everything they did. We listened to Jensen Huang. And, right. and investing is about making educated guesses Correct. about companies and 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 betting on who you think are winners. Right. Right. Um, and of course, in Nvidia's case, it it worked huge. Did we realize the AI revolution was gonna sort of like Change be everything. this big? Yeah. No. We yep. knew it was coming at some point, right? But right. we didn't. We had. We couldn't fathom yep. the speed at which it yep. came. And this is also brings me to something else called overconfidence, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I it's, did it's, this, so I could definitely do the other one. Right. No problem. So you have to have the humility to understand that sometimes right. you get lucky, and 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 you have, as you said, diversify. And yeah, you know, for people sure. would ask us why you're sending some Nvidia now because we've done really well, and and we want to be because you're up 10x in yeah. a, in two years. You should probably take some off the table. Hundred percent. <laughs> so those are, I think, all the things that we, I think, probably the biggest value that we bring to our clients is really help them yeah. make better rational decisions around yeah. these things and really reason out, hey, what am I doing that, what can I do to better improve my position I take less risk, yes. but also take more upside. Yeah. And again, I always say we're, we're financial therapists. We're financial psychologists. 100%. Uh, uh, and this is also, by the way, a problem for us too, right? Yeah. We are human in a sense where we have to actually stop ourselves and think about these things yeah. when we make our decisions, right? Because we're, we're also have all these heuristics and, yeah. and, and false and biases. And, yeah. biases. and we talk to each other, by the way, like 100%, when, when we part trade of our team. own accounts, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we need, we need outside, mm -hmm. you know, help to sort of like mitigate our own biases also. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's, I think we want to talk about this because I think it's an homage to Daniel Kahneman and, and yeah. Amos Trubisky. Daniel, Daniel, Passed away last month at nine years old. Had yeah. an amazing life. Amos, uh, I think, passed away in 20, 2002. 
Uh, they got a Nobel Prize. Uh, that's how important the research because yeah. this is extended beyond finance. It's actually in economics and medical therapies and uh, really anything that relates to making a decision. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, risk is part of our daily lives, and yep. and you know now we're talking about investing, and it brings us to what are the risks right now, right? There's Correct. always risks. Yep. The, the, the point about investing, if you're going to invest in the stock market and not buy a money market account, right? you have to accept that there are risks, yep. right? So what do we have right now? Well, you know, Iran attacks Israel, Israel attacks Iran, yep. oil prices go up, we yep. have an election, yep. interest rates. Like, if you start to lay out, like, oh, Ukraine and Russia, right? If you start to like, Talk about all the risks. You never leave your write house. Them, write them down. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> write them down on a piece of paper. You're like, how do I even get up? You know, um, yeah. and 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 it's true for investing, right? Yeah. Is there's always the the line in investing, right? Is the stock market climbs the wall of worry. Yep. yep. Um, and this is why passive strategies work really well, right? Like, yeah. just mute everything out, yeah. put it in index funds, and move on. Yeah, right. It, it, right. Um, but people still need that help, right? Yep. They still need to kind of like when things are going wrong, yep. what's what's going on, or when things are going right, where are the opportunities? Yeah, right. So, um, so now we have an election year, yep. which is always a, a you know a, a little bit more choppy scenario yep. in markets. Um, so. What does happen in election years? Well, we're going to show a few charts from uh, our friends at BlackRock, which are really, really awesome for me. One, number one is basically what the market did for the last hundred years, basically in election years. Yeah. And during <laughs> Republicans or Democrats, right? So it's it's really kind of eye opening where you see the charts, the market is going up regardless of who yeah. the who the president is. Um. It basically shows you that it doesn't really doesn't, effing matter. <laughs> doesn't care, right? Like yeah. the market the, doesn't care about politics. Yeah, and and actually, the irony in all this, the the like the last two election cycles is the best irony in all this. What sectors perform the best? Oh, that's the, hilarious! Like right? <laughs> the the. Under the Trump administration, the worst performing sector was the energy sector. Oil. Okay, <laughs> that's his. That's his base. Under the Biden administration, the best performing sector oil. has been energy <laughs> slash oil, uh, which is like he was the green guy, right? The green and, and by the way, the green en energy sector has been just obliterated in the Biden yeah. administration. Yeah. So, right, making bets in 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 sort of the light of politics yeah. is very difficult and dangerous. Yeah. What's obvious is actually not that obvious. Absolutely I think that's, not. That's really yeah. what, what the yeah. reality is, right? Yeah. And we always um, joke that the market always has a way to make you feel dumb no matter what you think. 100%. There, <laughs> there's yeah. things that just happen that you're yeah. like, oh, yeah. well, we didn't see that coming. So going back to the biases, right? Yeah. If you're going to invest or you're going to make decisions based on the fact that it's a, a Republican or a Democrat in, in, yeah. in, 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 in office, Probably not the greatest idea. No. Yeah. The, the good idea would be to just invest yeah. your money. Yeah, invest your money. Yeah. And, and there is some choppiness in general during yeah. election years. Yeah, and this is a, a, absolutely right. Like short-term versus long-term, right. right? Like short-term, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's part of the... But you're not going to be able to time it. No, that's the absolutely thing. You not. Know, I think the best example for me, the recent example is when Trump was elected, everyone freaked out. Yeah. Uh, we we remember that vividly. Ago. Yeah, vividly, right? The market yeah. was down huge. But then... After a day or two, market recovery. No, it was the think, same day. So same here's day. the legit, and I remember it like I have this flashbulb memory of mm -hmm. it, and all of us texting all the management team, uh, messaging each other. <laughs> um, and the, the Dow, the markets as a whole, but the Dow and the S&P were down 5% right. overnight. Not, yeah. That market ended up two percent that day. Yeah. So this was pre-market trading. That's an eight seven percent swing intraday. Yeah, that's massive. Because as the market realized, okay, well, this is actually probably good for business yeah. or whatever yeah. the case may be. Um, and so again, like literally within a day, the market just did a complete about face. Sure. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the biggest intraday mm -hmm. reversals that the market has ever seen. Yeah. Um, and that's. That's ultimately what trying to play politics on the short term means. Yeah. Uh, the next chart I'm going to show is um, it's time in the market that matters, not yeah. the political party or president, basically. No. No. And I have a chart that shows basically if you invested 
only during Republicans or only during Democrats or if you invested the whole time? Let me guess. <laughs> I mean, you it, did better if you invested the whole time. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I make buy sense. buy a whole buy, lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> buy a yeah, whole yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, hundred K, for example, uh, the whole time since nineteen fifty three would have been worth one point six million. Yeah. Uh, it would be worth thirty thousand under Republicans or fifty thousand under Democrats. So a little bit of difference. <laughs> a little bit Le of difference. Just right? a little the bit. The numbers are just stuck. Yeah. So yeah. again, so, you're so biased against your whatever politics you play. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Remember, it doesn't matter. Right. It matters is staying invested for the long yeah. haul and and ultimately yeah. like don't let your fear of whatever party is taking over like there's always this fear that the the opposite party of what you feel is taking over yeah. and somehow that's going to be a world ending event yeah. and i promise you that since the dawn of time mm -hmm. and at least is the dawn of the us mm -hmm. the other side has always felt yeah. that the other political party is going to ruin them 100% <laughs> and again it's really hard to do this i think the, the, why, why are we talking about this is because emotionally yeah. we have to understand that this happens internally and but we yeah. have to get over it it's yeah. as simple as that absolutely you know absolutely and that's what we again yeah. another one of these things one of the biggest roles mm -hmm. we play yeah. is to be the psychologist 100% um, and, um, and the investments are sort of secondary to that part yeah um, also it shows that choppiness during election years, yeah. with more volatility, right? That's interesting, right? Because it shows that usually the third quarter, the, the second the half of the year is the best. In this scenario, our year, yeah, like the first quarter was really good. Second we have quarter. a little quarter of choppiness right now. Oh, yeah. um, we don't know how the quarter is going to end up. But the third quarter usually is. Yeah, and yeah. remember, these are averages, so in any given year, anything can happen. 100%. Right? But yeah. over a multi-year period, yeah. these things all balance themselves out. And that's how investors should be thinking. Yep. The, the multi-year, mm -hmm. not what's going to happen between now and November. Yep. Uh, what's going to happen between now and November of 2030. Yep. <laughs> um, and also, what you, what you want to think about is, besides what the election who, who's who's a president i think more importantly where the economy is yeah right i think what determines where markets are going to go is what what part of the cycle are we in right yeah. are we in a recession are we going into a recession are we coming out of a recession you know so those are really what what we need to, to think about yeah and 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 a corollary to that is understanding what the expectations or how people feel yeah. about the economy, right? And that's usually contrarian contrar indicator. In other words, if I feel negative about the economy, it might be a good sign. Maybe a good sign. Yeah. Right? It's interesting to think about. Um, well, as we talked about, right now people feel very negative about the economy, but things are actually going well. 100%. Yeah. You know, right? And and that, that may be a very, very positive thing going into it because, yeah. you know, maybe rates will come down a little bit and things will, will yeah. move up around. Yeah. There's so many variables yeah. with markets on the short term that it's yeah. just, it's basically impossible to tell what happens yeah. on any intra-year basis. One other thing that we know about election years is people actually build up cash. People, because of the volatility, because of the fear, mm -hmm. so that people have more cash, which is usually a good positive indicator because that cash has to go somewhere eventually yeah, eventually right? yeah yeah and we've had record amounts of cash already right we on have sidelines yeah so um, and that's generally a good marker for a you know a future bull run yep. um but ultimately that money like you said has to be deployed somewhere yeah and so so there's you know again there's always risks when you invest money yep but yeah, let's talk a little bit about risk now. So I yeah. think I think we know this this election risk exists. Right. You know, we have to get over it. It's an election. It's yeah. going to be contentious. contentious. Blah, 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 Somebody's going to blame the other party yeah, it for is. winning or not winning. Correct. Um, and and we just have to move on. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, um so let's talk about risk. You know, why like I'm getting 5% of my treasuries. Yeah. I think I bought a treasury for 5.3 this morning for 12 months. <laughs> um that's basically, it's a risk-free assets. It's literally the safest thing you can yeah. buy, right? If you believe in the US government, which we, we do. Um, why would they buy anything else? <laughs> because, well, there's multiple reasons, right. right? The first reason is you're probably not going to get 5% forever. Sure. That number is going to go down at some yeah. point. Uh, yeah. At some point, most likely. Um, so that's one reason is if you buy that mm -hmm. a year from now, you might be earning less two sure. years from now, you might be earning less than that. Yeah. That's um, called the reinvestment risk. Right. Right. So that's one thing. And the other thing is 
if you're going to earn 5% a year, like, you know, we, we run like projections for our clients, retirement right. numbers, all this kind of stuff. If you try to run a retirement number projection on 5%, yeah. you're going to work till you're 90. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or you're going to live on a very low income compared to what you're living yeah. now. Um, so you need to take on some amount of risk. Right. Um, because without that, it's very difficult to reach a goal. Right. It's very important to understand that 5% is not a normal interest, a normal rate of return that you can expect from risk-free assets. So usually yeah. risk-free assets will give you 2 to 3%. Now it's higher, right? Yeah. But as you said, if I wanted to really get to my goals, yeah. if I need to earn 6 or 7 or 8% to get there, there's no way but I need to take risk. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And to take risk means that you have to go through downturns. You have to go through periods where there is volatility, yeah. right? Uh, so people will say, "Hey, why? Why should I? What should I, why should I be buying Apple or or companies like this?" Is because and, and even though there is volatility, is because if you wanted to get that seven or eight or nine percent over the long run, yeah. that is the only way to get it. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of assets that that can return that. You know, arguments can be made for real estate, but right. it's a, but they're what are called risk assets, right? right? Um, they're not risk-free assets. Mm -hmm. So if you if you invest your money, and uh, listen, on the flip side, if if you if you're perfectly in line with your goal, and your goal is mm -hmm. to get you know X amount of dollars, and earning five percent or four percent mm -hmm. will get you there, mm -hmm. and you don't want to take a risk. That's an option, you know, and this, that's that's a very good point, Al. Like we, when we talk work with clients, right? We we're goal based planning, right? Correct. So we look at their goals first, and we look at hey, what do we need to get there, and then what do we need to earn to get there? Yeah. Okay. And based on that, we'll decide what allocation makes the most sense, right? Yeah. Sometimes a lot of our higher net worth clients do not want to take a lot of risk, yeah. so we'll buy municipal bonds or things like that yeah. because they. They are yeah. already rich. They or just want to stay rich. Or on the flip <laughs> side, I have clients who are retiring or retired, and they're like, they're still like risk on mentality. I'm like, you know, like you're you're retired. You don't need to take this much risk right. with your money. Like let's let's pull it back a little bit yeah. because the numbers show that you're going to be fine. Yeah. Like if you, you know, you're adding more risk to your sort of right. retirement. Why would you do it and be so aggressive right. with right. that? So so we have to have these conversations again. Obviously, what every person's different. Yeah. But you need some amount of return generally to get right. you to where your goals are. Yeah. And, and I think you, you touched on another very important point, which is every person is different. Yeah. Some people are better with risk than others. Sure. Some people Absolutely. want to risk. Some people get risk. Some people don't want to risk. And some know? people just don't have any experience with it and right. need, need to sort of like break into it, right? Yeah. They got a new pair of shoes. Right. And they need to like walk in them for a yeah. little bit before they're comfortable. Yeah. And you have to define what risk means for you. Correct. Right. Every risk, your different, your <laughs> risk is different than my risk, and, and my risk is very different than my clients, right? So, uh -huh. like, even uh, even on the higher, it's it's funny because like you know, there's all these like measures of like what risk is and what, but ultimately it's it's dependent on each individual yeah. because every individual scale is sort of different. Right. What I think is high risk is different than you. Sure. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's very different from my client. Sure. Um. But the risk measure will all say that we're probably all on the highest end sure, of the volatility scale. Yeah. Um, but but it, it's sort of if the client doesn't feel it or know it, right? We always joke that everyone's aggressive when the market's up and conservative when the market's going down. Totally, yeah. You know, we, we found out very quickly in 2022 mm -hmm. how truly risk averse many people yeah. were in spite of how aggressive they thought they yeah. were in 2021. And that's probably it. Some of the hardest work for us yeah. is really to understand or help our clients understand what's their risk tolerance. Yeah, you know, and and and, and really make the right adjustments as because as you said, things it's a moving target; it changes. Yeah, you're right. Um, but okay, needing going back to needing to take risk, right? You have to. If I told you that fifty, if if a really good investor is right fifty five percent of the time, yeah, right, that means forty five percent of the times you're losing. Right? Yeah. So, so you're not going to get any upside without having any losers. Yeah. And you have absolutely. to be okay with that. Yeah. That, that is part For of sure. investing. For you know? sure. You just, you have to have your good ones. You have to run with your winners yep. and you have to cut your losers. Yeah. So most of us understand this intellect intellectually, but emotionally, yeah. you know, when I buy For a stock sure. and it's Tesla and it's down 40% this year, I'm freaking out. Yeah. You know, for, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Right? For sure. Uh, so I think it's really important to kind of 
dial that understand what's happening maybe dial back the risk if you if you don't Correct. need to right individual uh, stock risk yeah right systemic risk i buy tesla i have elon musk risk i have Correct. cost cutting risk <laughs> yeah. i have you know global slowdown risk i yep. have all kinds of risks right that i don't have necessarily or if have buy less index. of if i buy yeah. right even even a volatile index like the nasdaq mm -hmm. right that's tech based right i have 100 companies in the nasdaq 100 right. index right. that all have varying levels of yeah thing, or the s p which is 500 companies but it's really like 20 companies yeah. and, it's, and <laughs> you, you're touch upon a really good a very important thing that we do with our clients is diversification yeah. right we have to our number one job is not to take more risk than we need to yeah and we do that by diversifying by those index funds and for sure etfs and things like that because right? most clients are like we talked about at this at the start of this like prospect theory yeah risk biases most people are okay earning a good return right by by reducing and mitigating the risk right. versus trying to like you know knock it out of the park right um with, with a devastating loss possibility right so that's i think we hammered that point yeah yeah, yeah we're good <laughs> i think we got um, it so uh, so like anything right there's w w where there's risk there's opportunity yeah right mm -hmm. high risk high reward no pain no gain we've heard all these cliches the right. cliches are cliches for a reason right um and and obviously the one we've been talking about for for ages now and what everybody's talking about is ai right right that's that's the big thing and you know i i think it was capital group right that put out this article is ai bigger than the internet right um i i think the, we use the internet analogy a lot for our clients who are at least old enough to remember the mm -hmm. 90s like yep. like to me we're, it's like 1995 in the yep. investing world right yep. now or 96 or whatever right um when the pc came out right. and you know intel and microsoft were the big dogs mm -hmm. and and you sort of like had this first you know version hardware but we had no idea what was coming yep. five years from then ten years from then think about everything that the internet has done for humanity yeah right yeah uh, it's everything is done on the internet from watching video on tv to yeah. transportation, transportation to transportation. you know anything like military logistics all that you know consumption like ordering your groceries like right. all, everything Right, so maybe AI is even bigger than that. Right, and I think that's the argument: is is AI bigger? Like, and we talk yeah. about TAM, total, 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 total addressable market. Yeah, uh, nobody really knows this. I think that's what everyone. I is mean, excited. is it the world is the total addressable market? What is the the GDP <laughs> of the world is what? I think seventy five or eighty trillion dollars? I honestly don't know the answer to that. I, th I think it's about that. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Uh, so I, I mean, I, I can sit, I can sit here and rattle up a bunch of numbers, but nobody it. really knows. 80, mil, 80 trillion, <laughs> bajillion dollars. Bajillion, yeah, bajillion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think what we know is it's very exciting and it's changing a yeah. lot of the things that we do. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I use chat GPT daily. Daily. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, and it's an amazing product. And again, we're at inning, like we're in the beginning, right? Like, Think about your computer, this computer right here, yeah. right, that you're using right now and all the capabilities it does. And now think about the Windows 95 computer, wow, which at the time was, was the, the, an absolute revolution. Yeah. Um, and I remember using the first, my first Windows 95 computer. It was at my friend's house in seventh grade. Right. And I went, whoa. Yeah. Like, I cannot, and I've, I'd used computers before, but that, that Windows PC was the true revelation i'm gonna, um, i'm a little bit older than you my first yeah. computer was a commodore 64. yeah <laughs> listen I, I used the commodore 64 it wasn't mine uh, <laughs> but i used it but but that my point was is right like like we just got to the windows 95 computer yeah right ai was a thing three years ago right four years ago five years ago yeah. but it was the commodore 64. yep uh, I, I believe chat gpt is the windows 95. pretty much yeah because um, think about you know medical discoveries right yeah. now chemistry um yeah you know consumer products you know the way that we uh communicate with each other yeah you know the basically we have we're able to have access to all human knowledge yeah in one place and 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 build on it right it's, yeah. yeah it's it, just it's insanity if you it, i i watched this i don't know if you've seen this three body problem show on netflix no um it's a good show it's sci-fi it, it's kind of a it makes you sort of think about things but 
it, it said a really cool idea. It's like humanity has been around roughly in our stage for about a hundred thousand years. Okay. Right? It took us ninety thousand years to learn farming. Wow. Okay. Okay. In our existence, it took us ninety thousand years. Then it took us almost, let's call it eight thousand years or so. Maybe more, whatever, roughly, yeah. to learn industry. Right. The Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it took us, you know, from, let's call it from 5000 BC to 1800, whatever. To get. That's, let's call that seven, you know, 7,000 years almost. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it took us 150 years to get from industry to the digital age. Yeah. And now we're in AI. Yeah. 20 years later. The acceleration of technology is so vast right now. Yeah. And AI is going to turn that yeah. on a, like, just in a straight line up, yeah. basically. It's like next week. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> if you think about, like, like, I loved that concept because it just yeah. puts into perspective, like, how yeah. quickly technology changes technology. Right. Right. And I always talk about, and I also just listened to the founders episode on, on Cornelius Vanderbilt. Uh -huh. And I always used the analogy, so I felt good that he used it. Also, it was like there was a time where the tech, where the biggest tech revolution that existed was the transcontinental railroad. That uh -huh. was the internet of the 1850s. Right, right, right. Um, and now we look at trains and we're like, that's that's just a ridiculous, <laughs> like old thing. Totally. And and as such, in 20 years, we're gonna look back at that the computers like that we have today or Chat GPT and go, yeah. that's hilarious that you guys yeah. used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um. We could talk about this forever, yeah. but I think we'll 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 stop here. Yeah. I think this this really about an homage to Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky and really being cognizant and 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 have humility around uh, how uh, how how imperfect we yeah, are for sure. <laughs> as human beings. Yeah, uh, but also being mindful of those 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 heuristics so we can make better better decisions. But also not being afraid of risk and yeah. understanding what risk means for us you know absolutely 100 um, well see you next time sounds good thank you take care okay